what we're often doing in our relationships is we're substituting things. And what I mean by that is, let's say, so here's God. God has a really specific love for you, right? Which we've called the divine love, right? So God's love for you, the divine love. The way God created you, so here's your soul. The way God cre created you was that there is this natural inclination for the soul to need this love. So right from the soul's inception, God created this soul to seek God, but using its own will. But what most of us do is this particular love we never obtain because we don't know how to seek it. And so instead what often happens is that we start we start then substituting the seeking of that love for the seeking of other loves. Loves from other souls. Does that make sense? So if I'm a male, let's say I start seeking. And what I finish up doing is I start expecting this person to substitute the role of God in my life. Can you see what I'm saying? From a love-based perspective. Now, I've said to you over and over that God is not injured with love. So God can always love you perfectly. God is also your true parent. Now the problem is, for many of us, is we're seeking our love. This person may be a female parent, for example. We might be seeking a certain type of love from a female parent that in reality we should be seeking from God. And the flaw in the whole system, I suppose you could say, from our parents' perspective, is they want us to love us, to love them. Do you know what I mean? So how many of you have actually thought about having a child so the child would love you? I actually heard a lady uh, once on Oprah say that. Uh, she said, uh, she, Oprah asked her, why did she have a child? She said, I wanted someone to love me. Why do you? She has four children. She wanted a fifth and her husband doesn't want any more. And so she was going to leave her husband to have another man who would let her have another child, is the way she saw it. And what was she doing? She was actually living her life through her children. Right? And what that teaches those children is that they have to live their life through their parent. Right? So what ha happens in a dynamic sense for most of us is that we finish up having this dynamic where either our, mo our mother or our father, so, so on this side we've got our father, so that's our father, our earthly father, this is our mother. We start seeking emotions from them that really we need to be seeking from God. So we go through this process of substitution. It's a very, very damaging process to us emotionally. And it's also a very damaging process to us sexually. Because we start getting hooked sexually into our parents. Now what I mean by that is, if our father disapproves, let's say I'm a male, and my father, I'm hooked into my father's emotions, if my father disapproves of the kind of woman I want to go out with, I won't go out with her. Do you see? Because it doesn't get my father's approval. And that causes huge problems here on the earth. Often in the Middle East, the father doesn't approve of the woman, and so the, the male, the child, marries the woman the father does approve of and doesn't have any fulfilling sex life or any other life with her because all he wants is the other woman that he couldn't have. Do you see what I'm saying? This happens all the time in our relationships. And if I am hooked into my father or my mother or both in terms of their approval and their acceptance, what I'm going to do is I'm going to project those approval and acceptance through my desire. So in fact, down the track, I'll actually stop feeling a desire for the person I would normally be desiring, and I'll actually want to try to manufacture a desire for the person they approve of. And it even gets worse than that. What eventually happens is that I, if I'm a female, I'll attract a man exactly like my father, or the mirror opposite of him, as a result of these emotions. Or if I'm a woman, I'll attract a man who's exactly like, sorry, I'll attract, what did I say first? 
I think I said it one way around. If I'm a woman, I will attract a man who's either the mirror opposite of my father or the same, almost identical to my father. If I'm a man, I'll attract a woman who's either the mirror opposite of my mother or identical to my mother. Now, to give you an illustration of what, how that happened with me, I was only attracted to a woman of a certain type until I dealt with these emotions. So the type of woman that I was attracted to at that time was a woman that was in the five foot to five foot four bracket, right? Slim, slight, you know, with a figure, not, not large, not, not too skinny, but with a figure. And I also had some first century things mixed in it, so they had to have dark hair and they had to have certain eyes, whatever else. So lots of physical things, not much soul-based stuff going on, lots of physical things going on. And then they also had to have, emotionally, a feeling that they'd been hurt as a child. They had to have a feeling of some kind of abuse from a male, whether it be alcohol abuse or sexual abuse or whatever, from a male. They had to have a number of different other issues before I would feel attracted to them. Because this is what I was doing. I was feeling the attraction through the type of person or the soul of my mother, if you like, the type of person my mother was. Once I worked through all of those emotions, it was really interesting because I didn't know what I was attracted to after that. I didn't have any list in my mind anymore of what my woman would look like or be like or feel like or in terms of her appearance and, and in terms of emotions. Does that make sense? And once that occurred, then I could attract my soulmate. Right? Because before that time, all I was doing was just not attracting anyone who would have been anything like my soulmate. And and so now, like now, like my soulmate Mary is beautiful and tall, and and just I find her really elegant and and classy, and 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 that wasn't the type of woman generally that I would have been attracted to before. I would have been scared of Mary before, because of, because the type of woman would have been the type of woman that she needed to be feeling a bit downtrodden. And I needed to be the, the helper and the, you know, the carer and all these other things. So I could list a hundred of these emotions that I had, right? And after working through them all, it was totally different in terms of what my attraction was. So this is why it's so important to, st to break, if you like, the umbilical cord that we often have between ourselves and our parents in terms of the definition of the ideal partner. Does that make sense to everyone? It's a very big thing to go through. It's also a very powerful thing to go through in terms of appro approval. If your father or your mother disapproves of who you're choosing, look really deeply at why you're so hooked into their approval. Because mm. that's your law of attraction. Does that make sense? So look very deeply into why you're seeking the <laughs> approval of your mother or father in your relationship. You will find even that you might even be making love to the person that you're with and feeling the disapproval of your parents at the same time. And the truth is, if they are asleep in the sleep state, many times they'll actually be there in the sleep state watching you and projecting at you. <laughs> so while you stay hooked into those parents, they are going to be present every time you make love to this person like if they can be, and projecting at you anger and resentment and no, this is wrong, this is... And do you think that's going to make you feel great when you're having sex with that person? <laughs> of course not, right? And so you'll feel drawn into running away from the relationship. Now, so I've brought up two issues there. One issue is don't substitute love for other love. If you need God's love, seek God's love. In fact, God's love is the only love that is going to be completely fulfilling and, he, and, and is without injury. So seek that first. Then with regard to relationships, seek their love, but not through this substitution process of what your parents think or feel. If you do not break what your parents think or feel away from you emotionally, you will keep investing in their approval in every relationship until you die which is not a very good thing to do. And you will also encourage them, if they're in the sleep state or in the spirit state, you'll be encouraging them to interfere with your life. 
by having this feeling that you've got to seek their approval in your relationship. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And that is definitely going to interfere with your sex life, trust me. Definitely going to interfere. Angel, you mentioned cutting the umbilical cord with your parents. How do you go about that? It's about dealing with the emotion of why you're so hooked into their approval. So for instance, if I'm a male child and I want my mother's approval, the way that I got my mother's approval was whenever she needed any help, I was the male, not dad, but I was the male who gave her the approval she needed. Does that make sense? So if she felt bad about herself, I'd be the one giving her a hug. So only little, you know, you're only four, five, six, seven years of age trying to cheer your mum up, for example. So these are all things that have been established from a young age. So if you find yourself, for example, things like you don't want to tell your mother the truth, you don't want to, there's a, you have an umbilical cord connection still with her, if that's the case, if you do not want to tell her the truth. If you're afraid of what her reaction will be to the truth, you have an, a link that's happening that needs to be broken. If you're, like in my case, needing to always like nurture her, so I would also act that out with all of my partnerships, but I also needed to still continue nurturing my mother, so I had to stop doing that. And I had to allow the emotion that was underneath that to surface and feel it, which was a deep need for my mother's approval. Ironically, I often attracted my mother's disapproval as a result. And so like things like my mother would come home, and because I was quite a clever and intelligent uh, child, she would come home and test me with things all the time um, to see whether, whether I had the answer or not. And if I didn't have the answer, I could feel the projection of art. Oh, I can feel, mum felt good about herself if I didn't have the answer. Does that make sense? So I became invested in not having the answer. Because the only way to get her approval was to not, not be able to tell her what the answer was. Does that make sense? So I actually started shutting down my, my cleverness, if you like, and so much, so much so that around people, I would never tell them what I got, what I did at school or what I got at school. In fact, my parents, hardly ever knew at times even what marks or grades I got as a result, just in order to get their approval. Okay. You, is it all about trying to seek love and approval? Um, with our parents, it's often, there's often this yeah, addiction that we have. We don't feel loved, we never felt loved by them in many cases, and we're constantly trying to get their love. We're constantly trying to do something, do to do anything to get that love from them. Including if that means I meet a meet a female or you know I meet a man or a woman who I want to have a relationship with, and mum and dad don't agree, so I don't have the relationship. It even goes down that far. Or if you want to rebel and do the opposite, it's one of the two. It's always one of the two, generally. <coughs> if you want to rebel and do the opposite, you are still hooked in to yeah. your parents' emotions. But all you're doing is doing the opposite to rebel against them. <coughs> but you're still hooked into them, so it's not healed. If that makes sense. Same goes. Same goes. Remember, remember in your relationships and in your sexual relationships too, how, how, like if I'm a male, how my father feels about himself will affect me. If I'm a male, how my mother feels about men will affect me. Does that make sense? So I need to look at both sexes and how they feel about men. One will be about how my dad feels about himself. The other one, for me, will be about how my mother feels about men. If I'm a woman, how my mother feels about herself will affect how I feel about myself, and how my father feels about women will affect how I feel about myself. Does that make sense to everyone? And we need to allow ourselves to heal these emotions. When you heal these emotions, you will no longer have defined things in your mind as a list of all of the required attributes that the ideal partner is going to be. And honestly, we need to get rid of that because none of that is soul. None of that soul-based stuff. It's all injuries or physical attributes. So this is why many of us feel like, you know, if you look at a pattern in your life and you see every man you were attracted to was of a certain type, a certain type of physical structure, a certain type of emotional person, then that's telling you, in fact, and if you can relate that to either being the opposite of your dad or the same as your dad, then you haven't disconnected emotionally from your dad. And to be frank, you haven't disconnected sexually from your dad either. Right? 
right? So there's been some kind of sexual connection with your dad that you need to disconnect from as well. Once you disconnect from them, you will not, you will have a much, much wider viewpoint of what's acceptable um, in terms of even physical, but also emotional and spiritual nature, and you will allow that to be present. If, if that parent then passes over, does that alter? Doesn't alter anything. Doesn't alter anything. In fact, in some cases, it intensifies the feelings. The reason why is that mother or father can now be with you constantly monitoring you. Whereas before, they couldn't do that. So, so there, was, there was one lady I knew who, whose stepmother, who she grew up with from the time she was three, was with her 24-7 monitoring who she was getting involved with, what kind of person she was, what kind of things she did, and every time stepmom disagreed, and there was a big anger relationship between the two of them, any time stepmom disagreed, she tried to impact upon her, her stepdaughter physically. The stepdaughter was on earth, the mother's in the spirit world. So, so yeah, when they pass, they can even have a greater emotional well, yeah, feeling. Towards because they're available. Well, the other the issue time. too is often we lie to our parents about what we're doing. We know that mum, for instance, doesn't like this kind of a guy, you know, motorcycle riding, you know, <laughs> long hair sort of guy. And that's the guy I happen to be going out with this week, right? So, so if mum had passed, what's she going to be doing? She's going to be wanting to try to break up the relationship, cause all sorts of problems, right? That's what she's going to be trying to do it if she's invested in her daughter. And her daughter is still worried about how her mum feels. Now, if you do not want to tell your parents the truth about how you feel, you are still invested in them emotionally. It's quite simple. If you do not want to be yourself in front of your parents, you are still invested in them emotionally. No matter what age you are, you're invested in them emotionally. So how do you cut that? By feeling your emotional reasons as to why you do that. So why am I still wanting to protect my mother? Why do I still want my father's approval? I need to feel those emotions. Once I feel and release those emotions, I will no longer be seeking my father's approval or to protect my mother. This is what my, I'm listing you, you my emotions, right? So I won't try to do that anymore. And once I don't try to do that anymore, I've cut those linkages. And once I've cut those linkages, I can now be myself. And to be frank, you will never have a fantastic sexual relationship with someone unless you've already learned to be yourself. Hey, Jay, if, if there, um, you know, would you say that the mother's sort of, or the father's um, checking out the, your partner and that all the time going in the spirit world, is that even when they're up in the spheres, or is that only when they're earthbound? Or? When they're earthbound and in the first sphere, they'll do this. When they get to the second, third, fourth spheres, they start dropping off the emotions of judgment so because they're in a higher state of love themselves. So by the time they get the fifth, sixth sphere, they generally wouldn't be doing this. And if they were a celestial spirit, they certainly would not be doing this at all. So you'll often find, even to do with race, there might be selections that you feel impelled to make based on these linkages, even if your parents have passed. And a lot of times that is your parents' emotions that you're listening to because you couldn't break away from those emotions when, you're on earth, when they were on earth you still have the linkage when they've passed. So my suggestion is look really, really... If your parents are alive on Earth, or even if they've passed, but especially if they're alive on Earth, if you still have an investment with them, look really sincerely at what's going on because it will help you a lot in working through you being yourself. And you loving yourself is one of the most important things with regard to your connection with God. God wants you to be your pristine self. Your parents have an emotional investment in you being something different, generally. Right? So allow yourself to see the emotional... The, the real parent... The real parent is the... God, of course, is my real parent. The real parent is the one who can love me completely. While I'm trying to substitute that love with the love of my parents, in other words, while I'm trying to get love from my parents and not get love from the, my real parent, mm. I'm going to enter into emotional transactions that caused me lots and lots of personal damage. Is there any way that you can, you can't sort of get a spirit-proof room or anything? A spirit-proof room? <laughs> <laughs> you, don't, you don't want a spirit-proof room. The truth is, is if, you, if you feel your parent with you in a decision that you're making and you feel that I need, what would my mum do or what would my dad do in that situation? 
then what we need to do is start saying, all right, this is my law of attraction. My law of attraction is telling me that I'm still invested in my parents' emotions. Why am I, what am I wanting to do? I want their approval. So you'd sit down. If mum had passed, you'd sit down and say, mum, I'm still looking for your approval. Do you think if you loved me, you would, wouldn't you already approve of me? So why am I still, you know, why am I still looking for your approval? Yeah, yeah, they're all sitting around watching. Now, as they progress to higher levels of love, they, there's less and less of that kind of interference. And, and as they, if they become a celestial spirit, there's no interference whatsoever. All that they're present is just helping you whenever you want help. But if they're in the first sphere, which many of your parents will be if they've passed, or if they've just passed, generally they will be in the first sphere, what will happen is that there will be this strong intention of theirs to try and look after you in their way, which happens to be the most unloving way possible that they probably tried when they are on Earth, which you didn't feel too good about when they are on Earth. right? And so the key is for you to break these emotional ties with them. Now, I don't mean that you don't love them. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you, if you have emotional investments in gaining their approval and acceptance, or you have emotional investments in doing what they suggest to you, it is always going to lead to future issues with you, whether they have passed or they're alive on earth still. Okay.